Okay, guys, let's set up a little studio. We're not going to worry too much about lighting and stuff in this video. We're just going to set up a little studio. If we go to the render tab, we back out here. This is what we got. This is what everybody gets. This is but not what we want, okay? So let's go back to our model tab and let's make a new mesh. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to pull out a plane underneath it, okay? So I'm going to select my box and I'm going to make a little plane here like this. I'm going to bring it down to its even or as close as I can get without getting too precise. Okay, I'm going to hit the space bar to drop the tool. Let's go to our edge mode. Let's select these edges and hit the Z key. Click to activate the tool and let's extend our edges up like this. Okay, now we're going to have some hard edges in there. We don't want that. So let's select this edge, hit the B key to bevel it, click to activate the tool. I set my round level to about three and I'm going to bevel this in like this to kind of taper that off. Okay, now let's go to our render tab. Now let's adjust a little bit here. Okay, I don't like the shadows from the wall there. So, I'm going to select my floor studio thing that I call it, my little thingy. And I'm going to just extend it sideways like this to get rid of them shadows. Okay. Okay, now we got us a good little studio set up here. Now if we can go back to model, and go back out, now you might want to make your round levels a little more than what I did here, okay? So now we got this, and it looks better than what it did, but let's set up a few things. Let's go to our shader tree. Okay, now let's twirl down our environment and our render tabs, okay? When you twirl down the environment, you'll get the environment material. I'm going to click that environment material and change it from four color gradient to physically based daylight. Okay? Then I'm going to go to my render tab, go to my global illuminations tab, and I'm going to enable it. Now as you can see when I grab a render, this gives us a lot better result. Let's let that render out there. And um, I'll be back in just a second. Okay, now we have us a scene. Are where we're reflecting some of the environment, the blue there, and it looks a lot better than it did. And of course, you can adjust on your cameras and stuff. And we're going to have future videos about how to uh, make this look a lot better. I'm just trying to basically give you the rundown now. Okay, I know in some of the renders that you've seen of mine are really realistic, and Moto's famous for that, and we're going to get there. I'm just basically wanting to set up a scene for you right now. So, again, if we render this. As you can see, we're rendering 9.37 million polygons, okay? So, I mean, there's been much, much bigger. I mean, I've worked with things in, in the billions of polygons, but this is a pretty big little scene for just a display, 9.37 million polygons. And you can see we're, you know, getting good response time. I can, and at the end, I'll go in and freeze everything, and there'll be even more polygons. So now we have this cool little setup here. Let's go to our items list and let's change our light. Let's right click on it and change it to change type to area light. There we go. Now let's grab a render. Now we're starting to get somewhere, okay? Now we can go in and mess with our settings to make the shadow smoother and have this the light look better. There's all kinds of stuff we can do and we're going to do that. Let's twirl down our light area light here and look at see what we got. Our effect specular, let's turn that up just a tad. Let's go to our area light properties now. And let's turn up our sampling. I'm going to turn it up to at least 256. And I'm just using 256 to keep the render times low. You'd want to go higher than that, okay? 1024, actually. Okay, now we got simple shading turned on. Let's turn simple shading off and see if we can see any difference there. 
let's go back to our render tab and let's give a quick look over here we have our radiance let's turn our radiance ratio down to four under global illuminations and we'll turn our interpolation values to two now these are just little refining things that you really don't need to do right now I'm going to get into all this later okay so and if you want to go to your base shader and for some reason you want to turn off shadows this is how you can turn off your cast shadows visible to camera all that good stuff okay let's grab a render now of course we haven't assigned materials or anything like that and we're gonna get there okay like I said this is a slow process okay now we're getting what looks like a normal 3d render again nine and a half million polygons here now I'm gonna go over to my render here I'm gonna say add layer render output okay now let's grab this is a final color output too let's grab a render this If you go up here to this little final color output tab, you go up to this little output tab here, and now you can see you got color output one and color output two. There's the second one. There's the first one. Okay? It rendered them both at the same time. Pretty nice, huh? So let's let's add another layer. And we'll make it another render output. And we'll right click on it and, and um, we'll make this one ambient occlusion. See, as you can see, this is where you add all your reflection passes, your diffuse passes. You can just line them up and output them, right? So, now let's grab a render. Now, this display is not the Apple Cinema display that I was modeling before. This is one I already had done kind of just did it on my own and mixed it up a little bit had a different kind of hinge on it and stand and we never added the hole to the other display for the cord to go through the back but that's just a matter of booleans okay now that this is done if I go up here to final color output you'll see I have them all listed plus my ambient occlusion okay and there's my ambient occlusion pass and we're gonna go in and talk about how to smooth this up and make it look a lot better it's real fuzzy right now and furry so to speak and in our next videos we're gonna talk about that but right now we're not gonna worry too much about it um, what we want to do is go to our area light and we can up our samples I'm up at 1024 and grab a render okay now we have a lot smoother render we have all of our outputs oops we have all of our outputs that I picked and um, this is it for this video in our next video we'll try to get more in depth on shading and, and stuff like that now don't forget about your live preview here as you can see I got this live renderer over here on the left, right here, that I can check without different angles with. If I want to check things out. You see it's live and it updates. And I can also go into options, say use multiple threads and never stop rendering. And it'll just keep going. You can see it's using four render bars here, so it's using all four cores. So I went ahead and froze it and everything and kind of reduced my geometry a little bit and we got what looks like a finished standard 3D render. Okay, um, we're going to go on further from here but I think this is enough to get you some decent looking renders so you can see what you're working on. So uh, thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.